Hello, good afternoon. You're welcome to Agenda on TV3. My name is Deborah Kwabla. The perennial problem that we have in this country among farmers and headsmen has become very perennial and it has left on its track destruction to farmlands and human fatality. We know in March 2017, government set up a committee to implement the cattle ranching projects. And we also know that this conflict that exists between headsmen and farmers is a security issue. What are we doing as a country? Why do we have this perennial issue? That's what we are discussing on agenda this afternoon. From far left with me to do this discussion, we have Dr. Kwame Opong Anani. He's chairman Ghana Cattle Ranching Project Committee. He's also a former director of animal production from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. In the middle, we have Iman Hanafi Sunday. He is a chairman of the National Association of Cattle Farmers. And on my immediate left, we have Mr. Charles Nyaba. He is a ch program officer, Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana. Welcome, gentlemen, to Agenda. Thank you. Thank you. We'll Thank start you. with you, Doug. The, what, what do you f what, what's your view about the way media has reported this issue, uh, especially uh, the issue relating to whether all headsmen are Fulani? Well, uh, not surprising, because we don't seem to know who are really the transhuman herdsmen. Well, most of them are Fulanese, but not all of them are. Yeah. And then the media, you know, talking about it, is, is, I think it's in the right direction, because uh, of the problems that are being created, and awareness need, needs to be, create, to, to be created. However, I believe that if the right people are consulted, maybe it should will be better clarified. Mm. Iman, you are representing the, uh, the farmers. And so what, what really is the issue? Well, thank you very much um, for the opportunity. I think, um, as we all know, the issue of the conflict between the herdsmen and the crop farmers in Ghana um, has become a very serious one as long as it leads to a uh, uh, loss of lives. And sometimes if we <coughs> meditate, we'll find out that uh, it is not only in Ghana. This is an issue that is cut across, cut across the entire sub-Saharan Africa. And it is because the system of grazing that we're having, that is movement, grazing by moving from one, the nomadic system of grazing, that is why I think we are having this problem here and there. But it's because there are no rules and regulations that are supposed to be enforced uh, to regulate the affairs of the herdsmen. And I think that are, those are the causes of this problem. We, we have a protocol, uh, uh, the ECOWAS protocol. Mm -hmm. And the ECOWAS protocol spells out some uh, regulations uh, and also what governments should do and what the herdsmen should do. Is that not enough? Because then you don't expect herdsmen to, dis to, to cause harm to people's farms in the course of their business. Is yes, that, is that, that not is, enough to help uh, That is enough. That what, what is true. It's happen. enough. But if we have laws implemented, we all know we are in Africa. <laughs> if we have laws implemented and they are not enforced, we have a problem. And then one thing also is that it is not all these herdsmen who understands these protocols we are talking about. So therefore, if there are laws, there must be awareness creation, there must be sensitization, education to a level. So, and so then it should be a thing of one country to the other. So there are a lot of issues that need to be addressed for people to understand what the protocol means and also make From sure From the association it. perspective, you are the chairman of the association. What do you do with the headsmen to make sure that they have understanding of these issues? Well, uh, we have been sensitizing them, but although we are just an organization whereby it's formed to make sure that there are, there's a development in the livestock sector and also try to tackle this conflict or to support in tackling this conflict, but we are not lawmakers. We only advise. So if, even if we tell someone to do something which we believe that is the best, if the person, if there's no law and the law is not enforced for the person, 
to do it, then we are not in position to force the person to do it, although we want the person to, we, we to do that. We will get into the issues of some of the recommendations because we want solutions, we want to deal with the issues. So if you are an association and you are providing uh, recommendations and advice to deal with the issue, we will hear some of them. But let's go to uh, the person farmers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, w what's really the challenge? We've heard a lot of farmers have had distracted uh, farmlands and all that. But give us an idea of what the current yeah. situation is. Um, thank you. Um, let me say good afternoon to my colleague farmers, especially those at uh, Kohu Enclave. As we speak, a meeting has just been com uh, completed, led by the overlord of uh, Kohu traditional areas with the farmers and the representative of uh, the cattle farmers, trying to find solution to the issue. I think uh, uh, you earlier on asked Doug whether the media overreported the issue or not. To me, I think the issues have not actually gotten the media attention that it deserves. Because from 2016 to 2017, the figures I got about the loss of lives, we have over 100 people losing their lives because of this conflict. And most of the lives that we lost are not even heard in the national level. We don't know what is happening here. You go to the grassroots, and then we have majority of farmers who struggle. Their produce are ready for harvesting, and these animals will go and destroy all. And if the women are going to talk, the youth are going to talk, it leads into a different thing. So to me, I think that our leaders have disappointed we, the farmers. And it's the way we always see farmers to be. Uh, somewhere at the beginning of the year, we all heard what happened in Central Region. When a community member attacked a military person, and that person lost his life, this country nearly turned down. Because from the presidency, from media, from international organizations, everybody were talking about it. To the extent that that person had to begin a state barrier. Now we are talking about over hundreds of people who are losing their lives and we are not even getting consolation message from the ministers or even the vice president or the president that at least we are mourning with you for losing your life. Meanwhile, these are the people who labor day in and out to provide food for all of us sitting here. So to me, I think we've not actually done justice to we the farmers. Now, if you continue to come up with policies, hmm, these days our attention is about agriculture policies planting for food and jobs, fast death, cattle ranching laws. Yet we are not looking at the welfare of the people who are supposed to implement those policies. I don't think we are, doing, we are, we are, we are being uh, fair to the farmers. And that's what is happening. So to us, we think the issue is more than you are hearing in Accra here. You go to the grassroots and uh, what is happening there is not good enough. Doug, any, any reaction? We've lost over, according to his um, report and calculation, over 100 people, massive destruction to farmlands, even at the point of harvesting. Any reaction from? Yeah, that is very, very sad. It shouldn't have happened if we had followed the ECOWAS Transhumans Protocol. This shouldn't have happened at all because the protocol has laid down certain activities to be undertaken. Even before the herdsmen leave their countries of origin, there are certain things they should do. They should have health certificate for their livestock. They should also have identification, uh, uh, sort of, sort of, some sort of identification. They should be told where to go, I mean, where to cross the border. And then the certificate ought to be uh, uh, looked at by the authorities in Ghana and then also told where to say, take their head to. The second thing, for instance, every 50 cattle should have one herdsman so that you'll be able to control them properly. And also, they should not move in the night. There's a corridor that they should take, and there's a place that they should go, reserved by the government, you know, what one may call maybe grazing reserve or food banks, where they should go. And even when coming back, there is a route that they should be taken and monitored. 
and this is not done. So these are some of the reasons why we are having the problems that we are having, and there's no reason why we should continue on with that. Mm. Why, why are we not following the, the protocol? Because the protocol is uh, very well laid out. It, it gives us what to do. Yeah. So why have we failed to follow it? Well, <laughs> I'm not in a position you know, to say that. It indicates exactly why they reason it. But we all know that Ghana, at times, we just refuse to go according to regulations and ad ad adhere to specific laws. So maybe that's why. But it's this is when human life is involved. We are talking about, about hundreds of lives and destruction to farmlands. And, and like uh, he said, we are implementing projects to increase production. So if we allow, well, let's go to Imam. Imam. The, the farmers are the, the main target. So they, the cattle come to the farm and destroy. Why should cattle enter people's farms and destroy these farms? Well, uh, thank you very much. I think um, I would like to also make it very clear that um, most of what comes out from the media houses at the top here sometimes does not represent actually what happens at the grassroots level. It paint a picture for, for, for us what happens at the exactly. ground. Exactly. You see, there is no uh, smoke without fire. Sometimes if issues are happening like this, we have to make sure that we identify the causes, implications, and then also look for solutions. Look, sometimes some of our chiefs, I'm very sorry to see some chiefs, some, I didn't say all. They give lands because most people think that this conflict is only about farm and then the cattle and the farms issue. No, there are so many conflicts. Even most of the conflict that lead to life, claiming lives has to do with, most of them has to do with land issues where some of the chiefs may allocate lands to some of these, our herdsmen. One thing I would like to clarify here that there's no herdsman in this country or let me say, 100% of the herdsmen, I'm telling you that about 75% of them who are in the various communities are accepted there by the chiefs who give them the land and then they pay for it. You get me right? So they come, although they are not coming like maybe formally by the government protocols, but they go traditionally. So they meet the chiefs and negotiate with the chiefs. And the chiefs may give lands to them instructing a young man most of those places may not belong to the chief you get me right it may belong to some ebusian or some youth whereby the chief may be having his own um, percentages or some of traditional things that they may be doing to him so if care is not taken the chief may take more than the hairs of cattle the required hairs of cattle at the area so the capacity becomes very tight because there are a lot of farms. Mm. So because of what he wants, if this man comes in, bring, go be there. You bring, go there. Then before you know, we have about 20 heads of cattle occupying a, a place. And each head is about how many? Each head is about, we call it, it's about hand, more, ever, over 100. For we, we live over 100 as heads of cattle. So if you have about 20 heads of cattle. That's over 2,000. Exactly, over 2,000 cattle. And then maybe the environment where they are, we have a lot of um, uh, crop farms there. You find out that now the number of the animals are more than, you know, even get. So they cannot move freely without falling into farms one time to the other. So all those things, even if you own the land, that is one. And number two is that they give other lands that does not even belong to them. So the owners, the right owners of the land will just approach the herdsmen and just tell them, look, go away from our land. Because number one, you are not benefiting anything from you. Number two, once in a while you fall in our waters. Number three, they go to the, our farms once in a while. So you have to depart. And they will say, no, we are not departing because it is the chief that gave us the place. Mm. Let's fix it before you know one day they are attacking. Some of the fatalities them. recorded, you see gunshot wounds and things like that. Yes. So these herdsmen actually travel with, with guns on them? Licensed guns? Or? Yes, I may not say licensed or unlicensed, but I'm sure. But, but they use it anyway. Yes, because it's, it's happening. We all know that both the crop farmers, all our practitioners, those who practice uh, uh, farming, both livestock and crop are with guns, local guns. We all know, even if you're on your we road going, you see the local men holding their guns. That's what that we know. Although we all know that it is illegal for you to carry a gun without a license. 
You get me right. So what we are saying is that, a example, let's just see what happened at Kou recently. When Kou Mahini, who just came on, thought that there is a need of coming around and initiate a program that will bring a peace in the, in the area, around the area. But what happened? When he initiated this program, Kate Ranching Control Kou, we all went there, accepted that definitely this is a good thing, it should be done. But the registration began first day, second day, third day, before we knew, some people just approached our members, the headsmen. They were destroying their farms. No, no, there was no any record of destruction. I'm talking of this very thing that just happened recently. Three people were killed. They, they approached them in their house where they are living with their... They've not even moved very early in the morning. Approached them there and killed three of them. So take one of their heads away. They cut off his head, one of them. One of them's chest was breaking and they brought out intestines. The police can confirm this. Three of them were killed without a reason because the policemen from the headquarters came there. I was there. The police at the district was there. When they asked what is the reason, there was no reason. They just killed them and went. So we called our people to console them and tell them, look, even though it has happened this way, you have to allow the law to take its course. Hmm. Hey, Iman, I, I hear you clearly. You're talking about the chiefs sometimes over uh, allocating lands that do not belong to them. It, it, does it make it legitimate? to have a head w go into someone's farm and destroy it, irrespective of whether the chief made a mistake or not. Does it make it legitimate? Yes. Yeah, because I, I then am, the mistake of the chief is now being meted on the... the yeah, the, what, the, I'm, the, saying, what I'm saying is that, you know, when issues are happening, that's why I say there's no smoke without a fire. When issues are happening, sometimes we need to find out why those issues are happening as well. Because if you give, if you give a person a land, and that very land you give a person, there's a crop farm here, there's a crop farm here, there's a crop farm here. But, but that between. does not make it legitimate. Let, let's get to Mr. Uh, Nyaba and, yeah. and hear his reaction. Yeah. Uh, so th this one, chiefs have been mentioned <laughs> and all that. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about the, the plight of the headsmen who also go to achieve legitimately to try and get um, grazing land and all that? To me, I think uh, I will no more agree with uh, Iman on that score. There's no justification for taking human life, no matter how. You see, we have They have also fallen victim of, of same. No, because uh, what he's saying here, there is no records to confirm that well, those on, lives on, were, on, were, were on, taken on, by, by, by on, on this set, we cannot confirm yeah, that. Yeah, we cannot uh, confirm this, that. These are your but once, once a farm is destroyed and somebody is killed on the farm, there's evidence that the killing was done by somebody who owns the animals. So how, that how one we can you, How confirm. can you prove that? For instance, I have my farm. You come there, you see the, the first of uh, cows in the farm. Then you see somebody dying on the farm. So there is evidence that somebody came there with cattle. And then maybe, because I have some pictures here, if you like, I can show you. There are enough evidence on the crop farmers who died that they were killed by the Fleni yeah, Well, that, that also we cannot, we cannot substitute. We, can we know that in, in we can confirm that. the conflicts yeah. they have in no, human the point, fatalities the point, the point, uh, as a result of this conflict. But, but the we point to us, the individual cases to, to, to us, to us, there's no way we are going to accept any reason for taking somebody's life. That, that land was given to a person by a particular chief. For that matter, you go there to graze your animal in the nearby farm. You allow your animals to enter there, destroy my crop farm, and when I'm going to talk, you attack me. Dog. But the problem is coming from the chief. Yeah, now I'm going to give you a scenario. You know, when you go to certain parts of uh, northern Ghana, they also graze animals by the indigents, where they take the animals to go and graze them, bring them home. There are instances where these animals destroy crops. But there's always negotiation between the owners of the animals and the crop farmers. You understand? So, uh, allergy or human sitting here, I don't think if his animal destroy my, 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 my farm and I approach him, he will attack me. Those who do that are the caretakers that he put on the farm who don't understand language. And the only language they understand is if there's any mis uh, misunderstanding, they have to use weapons. They should be the target. So, in any circumstance or under no who, condition, who should be the target? No, the point. The, the caretakers or the, the, car caretakers, the farmers. The caretakers. The, the owners of, of, the, of the head. No, the caretakers. Mm, for uh, Hanafi sitting here, 
he understand that when the animal destroy my farm and I approach him, he will either have to come and compensate me or do whatever. But the person he put on the farm will not understand. The only language he understand is to use the weapon. So it's his responsibility to ensure that he educate that person that killing is not the solution. And that is not what we've not been able to do well. Now, part of the problem is not from only the owners of the cattle. It's also from our policymakers. The ECOWAS protocol is there. We still need local bylaws to empower the implementation of those protocols. And because we haven't seen this as a full security threat, a security threat, we are not actually putting enough measures in place to enforce those laws. If you saw this as a security threat, we would have done that. And let me tell you, as we are sitting here, we are underrating the effect of what is happening on security of this country. When this thing continues, because there was a point in time I got called from Brekum, Jema, Kintempo, and then Atabubu, where community members were also arming themselves that anybody they see and the person looks like a felony person, they were going to attack the fellow because innocent women and young people were killed for no reason. And then it had to take efforts for us to calm them down. So the point I'm making is that this has become an annual ritual. Last year, we saw what happened in Abugu. We were all there. And then they were talking all over. Uh, the then um, Eastern Regional Police Commander who passed away, may she so rest in peace, did everything to the extent that they have to move all the animals away from Abugu. When the temple came down, then we came back and relaxed. That is what is happening. When the killing is going on now, we will talk. Everybody will come out. The street will come and talk. Then when it comes down, we we'll go and rest. I don't think it's, uh, um, it's, it's the way to go. We need to find a lasting solution to this. Doug, the, the committee, the Cattle Ranching uh, Implementation Committee, was set up in March 2017 uh, to support. What specifically is this committee? What was the mandate of the committee, and what have, have you done so far? Well, it was launched on, uh, in, in August. Mm this year, not much. Okay. Yeah. Where well, the mandate of the committee... So it's a very, it, very young committee. March yes, April yes, it May. is. Yeah, we just had a few, a few months. A few months, operation. okay. So August. You know, so not much has been achieved as at this stage, but we hope that in a very reasonable time, we will come out with a sustainable solution, you know, to cut down all these problems and enhance cattle farming in this country. We've so far been engaging stakeholders uh, across the line. You know, uh, committees already set up by government and uh, uh, NGOs to look at the problems of uh, transhumans conflicts. We've been talking to them. We've been getting ideas. And uh, in about a week or so, we are going to meet the National Castle Farmers Association also to interact with them, find out the problems and then ways of solving the problem. Because we want to have a lasting solution. And uh, it takes a bit of time to come up with a sustainable solution, but we believe in the long run we should be able to do that. Taking also into consideration the transhumans protocol. Hmm. Well, um, no, we, we, don't, we don't, let me, I, I know you want to react to some of the things he said, but we don't have a lot of time because this is an annual, it's become an annual ritual. As we hmm. speak currently, there's, tension in some part of the country. So how long, it takes some time, but how, how, how much time do you need to start putting plans in place that can, can be implemented so that we can see concrete actions? Mm. How, how soon should we expect concrete well, actions? Well, we believe by early next year, maybe February or so, we would have come out with a That's strategy. That's about three, four months away. Yes. And there's current the, tension. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's, we, we, so what are we doing now? We would now? have wished that we could have had a solution within a, a matter of a few days. But that's not possible. We won't, don't want to come out with strategies that will not work. And therefore, we have to get the stakeholders buy into whatever strategies that are adopted. And therefore, we cannot rush. But I believe early next year, we should be able to come with a solution for implementation by the government. But I'm going to ask again, what are we doing right now? Right now that the extension, the... the Ranching is going on, the headsmen are in the communities. This is active farming season for a lot of farmers across the country. 
So there's an issue now. So now what are we doing to at least mitigate uh, until we have concrete implementa implementation uh, next year? Yeah. Well, uh, we are in the process of setting up uh, committees, you know, cattle ranging committees in the regions and the districts so that they will be closer to wherever the problem is and will be able to educate both the farmers and then the herdsmen as to what to do. Yeah, in addition to that, we are, as I said, we are meeting the National Cattle Farmers Association, quite a number of them from all the regions uh, in about a week's time, also to find out how best to uh, see to the solutions, you know, come up with the solutions. Uh, we know that there's, there isn't time, people are dying, and uh, we need to work very, very hard, and that's what we are doing. But it is better we take a little bit of time to come out of uh, solutions that would be acceptable to all and workable. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying that it needs to take a bit of time. But the awareness must go on, educating uh, the healthmen as well as our farmers so that we don't have the problem. In fact, there's even the protocol uh, comes out with an article on arbitration. When there's a problem, we don't have to rush to fight. But there's a way to go about of it. In fact, the arbitration, it says that um, the commission for the arbitration should comprise of the herdsmen, representatives of the herdsmen, farmers, agriculture officers, officials from the ministries uh, responsible, and then uh, the local political and administrative authorities. When there's a problem, they are to come in and then solve it before it escalates. You know, so this is what ought to be done right now. Mm. You know, right now, it's farming season for a lot of farmers. The rains have set in, and the herdsmen are also looking for grazing land and all that. What is the association doing right now to mitigate the issues so that we don't get another? Last year, it was Agogo. This year, is Kweu, or now is Kweu. We don't mm -hmm. know where else we are going. So what are you doing to make sure that you can deal with the issues right now as we wait for the committee to give us some concrete actions for next year? Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, what we are doing is, uh, as uh, Mr. Charles said earlier, I think um, the issue on hand is um, we are the victims, the crop farmers and the cattle owners, we are the victims. Because whenever you hear death, then it's either the crop farmer or so, the so who, who, who is the perpetrator? Because the, the mm -hmm. farmer says the herdsmen are the perpetrators. Now you the see, herdsmen are saying see, the issue, we are victims. The issue so is who, that, who is the perpetrator the issue is that, of, of this? The issue is that if the perception, the, if there is a hatred, and that hatred, hatred grew to an essence, you get me right. For instance, as he said, none of us expect that even though mistakenly a cattle goes to a farm or whatever, we don't expect a life, a whole life, to be loosed because of this conflict. That's why he was saying our fathers, we, we met our fathers here with cattle, a lot of cattle. But it, once in a while, they fall into the farms. But at the end of it, they sit on the table, negotiate, and do things normal. And therefore, they are compensated. Is, in is, like it, is it once in a while issues we are dealing with right now? Is no. It more no, what, uh, I'm, saying, what I'm saying is that now the issue is that the perception and the hatred that has been caused by this, within these two parties has gone beyond. And therefore, what we have to do, as you are saying, we are all around sensitizing our people. And then we are also in collaboration with the peasant farmers as well, though we, 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 we know that we are the victims, so we have to come together. So we've collaborated and then even signed an MOU that we are going to embark on peace campaigns and then advise our people so that they will be able to have some rules and regulations at the district levels so that at the end of it, at least, even if a farm, a cattle uh, straight to a farm, that could not lead mistakenly. The herdsmen, we tell them to do as much as they could do to avoid their cattle straying to farms. But in terms of if it happened mistakenly, they also the crop farmers should also uh, uh, do, uh, have patience and then make sure that the authorities are aware, then amicably we solve that problem. So oh, that yeah. is for, for now, we are sensitizing them. We're going, as I speak to you, I'll be leaving to Kowu tomorrow. They are having a, a, a Eastern Regional RISEC meeting, which I have to be there to see what is actually going on. So we are, no, no sitting at all.
of uh, um, we are touring the 10 regions day and night there is no peace because people are dying mm -hmm. and we are very worried well we'll, we'll go for a break when we come back we'll continue the discussion we'll be back shortly civic areas all the time so those th that were there last year probably uh, are aware of certain things that they don't want to do they shouldn't do um, but basically they bring that cattle for food which is pasta and water and they must find this for them so if they are told where to go they are monitored and there's adequate resources, feed resource for them, then this problem will not happen. And some of the animals tree, not that they intentionally want to go there, the husband intentionally want them to go there, but as it has been indicated in the protocol, every 50 cattle must have one herdsman mm -hmm. and must be an adult above the age of 18. But in some cases we see that they are very young people and they, they, they don't know what to do in case of a problem. So these are some of the problems, but I, I believe there ought to be a solution, and we can find a solution to that. Mm. Well, the uh, uh, director of uh, police operations, uh, Dr. George Kufo Dampari, has cautioned their nomadic headsmen to desist from destroying farms or face lawful removal, and this is uh, something that he has said. We have on the phone lines... Uh, uh, Mr. Adams Bona, he's a security and safety expert to speak with us. Hello, Mr. Bona, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Mm. Good uh, afternoon. Mr. Bona, if you could please hold on. Let's listen to uh, Dr. George Ekufu Dampari and then we'll come back to you for your reaction and we'll continue. Let's listen to the SOT. We want to tell them you cannot do that and we hope that they will take this caution seriously and desist from that attempt of destroying people's farm because once we are in the community, any of such things that come to our attention, we will fight with all the force that is within us in terms of the law. Police also continue to patrol the community day and night and have some form of mobile police stations because each of the community there virtually have no police station. So we are not there just doing patrol by the roadside, we, by on the roads. We are there virtually living with them as if we have a police station in there. That, that was uh, COP Dr. George Ekufu Dampari. We have Mr. Adams Bona on Skype. Good afternoon, Mr. Bona. Hello, good afternoon, good Mr. Afternoon Bona. Good afternoon. Yeah, th thank you very much. Good afternoon and good afternoon for cherished uh, listeners, uh, viewers, sorry. Mm. We, we, good to have you this afternoon. Uh, we, we are looking at the headsmen and the farmers' conflict, and what, in your view, is fueling this perennial conflict? Every year we have something like this. What, what is fueling it, and what are the security implications for this country? Thank you once again, and uh, good afternoon to your cherished uh, viewers. The problem has to do with the lack of uh, logistics for the security agencies, i.e. the Ghana Police Service. I did hear Dampari. He talked about uh, but uh, if you've been monitoring the news, uh, his boss, the IG, did indicate that they need more men. We need at least about 28,000 to 30,000 more police officers to be to, to at least reach the the per the UN uh, what you call, call it uh, citizen police ratio of about 500. Uh, we haven't reached it. First of all, this uh, what do you call it? Uh, and also, let me say good afternoon to the panel, the the panels, uh, the, the the people you have uh, in your your studio. First of all, this issue has to do with we looks like we put all the full learning. Uh, people in one basket and the stigmatization is not helping us to be able to tell who is committing what type of crime. If someone is killed in this country, it's up to the police to be able to investigate 
and bring the perpetrator, the person who committed this heinous crime, to book. Make sure the person is sent to court with all the evidence. But you realize that these are nomadic herdsmen. They live deep in the forest or deep in the bush. The police don't have the logistics to go in there. When people are killed, we've had incidents where it takes sometimes a day or two before the police will visit the crime scene. And when they go there, what we have the police for a, what do you call it, a homicide unit. The police homicide unit, do we have them in all over the country? Do we have them in these areas where we have the nomadic headsmen? We don't have them. And so they go there, they sometimes would have to bring in those people who have been shot dead or those who have been killed to the mob and sometimes at the end of the investigation because then uh, no one was at the scene. It was only reported by people who found whoever has been killed. And so once people get to know that I can kill and not get arrested, then it fuels what do you call it, attention we currently have. I've been monitoring the discussion we've been having in your studio and to ask the chairman of the committee, what are they doing in the interim to uh, ensure uh, that our... Especially right now. Keep right now. Yes, what are, what are they doing to ensure that we this, this uh, needless deaths, you know, stops? He, was, he said it's going to take four months. And so take it, I mean, or leave it. Between now and the time they are able to implement what uh, strategies they have, how many people would have died? Exactly. I would have expected them to say that as a committee, what they are doing is to ensure that these Fulani headsmen, most of them come in and they leave. They, they come in through, you know, co uh, what, what do you call it, uh, Burkina Faso, and they leave. Some of them come through the, what do you call it, they come from Nigeria and they leave. So what, we, what I was expecting him to say was, we are going to ensure that where the, the exit and the entry points, we have enough security to ensure that we don't have uh, those who are not already in, we don't have them coming in. And, and so this is how we, these are some of the measures we are going to put in place. Yeah, and Mr. secondly. Mr. Bona, please, please yes. go ahead, but also to, to um, include uh, both uh, the headsmen, the representative of the headsmen and the farmers' uh, representative on this set right now are giving the indication that both of them are victims and um, chiefs have been mentioned and all that. Uh, do you feel that these headsmen and the farmers are victims of this issue or they, they are perpetrators of this uh, as well? I, yes, I think I will go with, with both sides. Both of them are, you know, victims. In the sense that as we speak, if you had the, the what do you, the, the farmers, the, 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 the crop farmers, the leader of the, the representative of the crop farmers, what he said was that their members are getting killed every day. You did also hear from Imam something, uh, the, the, the cattle, uh, you know, he is repre representing the cattle, cattle farmers, yes. He did also say, yes, he did also say, their members have been butchered. And so, yes, there is evidence that some, they are, I mean, we are losing life from both, both you know, both mm -hmm. sides. And these are needless deaths we are currently encountering. But I do, I find it especially uh, degrading that as, 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 uh, as ECOWAS, if you heard him, he talked about uh, some policies ECOWAS has put together. But one thing the chairman of the committee didn't mention was that our leaders failed to ensure yeah. that if we have nomadic headsmen who are coming into this country, before you can head a cattle, you should be able to speak at least one of our languages. I have encountered most of these Fulani, uh, they are everywhere. I mean, I wouldn't say Fulani. I have encountered headsmen yeah. who speak a language that I don't understand. Yeah. You speak languages, any of our Ghanaian languages, they don't understand any of them. And so, so, so there's a communication as, as gap as well. Yes, for us as, as, as a group have failed. Our leaders have failed us. And so what is now happening is that you have every Fulani, when you mention Fulani people, the people are agitated. And I think that we need to be careful or else just like uh, the, the crop farmers, the, the, the reps said, people mm -hmm. are arming. And so what is going to happen is that we are going to begin to have reprisal attacks. We have very good Fulani people all over the world. And we have very good Fulani people in Ghana. We have them, you know, and so let's be able to delink the criminals, the criminal elements who are Fulani's. Because 
remember, remember, it is not every headsman in Ghana who is a Fulani. Mm. That's what we haven't been able to do. Oh, okay. I know of an incident in one of the areas where a grass between a poor okay. farmer and his neighbor, he went into the farm, shot him, and he, he was blamed onto the Fulani. Mm. He was later attained out of, uh, he confessed, and the police arrested him. And so let's be able to, once we begin to punish uh, criminal elements mm. in our community, M Mr. Well, I sure. and we're not also using technology. Mm. Please round it up for me, and, and uh, just before you go, very, very briefly, uh, what should we focus on in, in a few words? What should we focus on to make sure that we can deal with this issue I once and for all? What, what, we should focus, what we should focus on is to make sure we ensure that those who are coming in, we stop them from coming in. Mm. Those who are already in town, who are already within us, we number them. Get to know how many, I mean, how many cattle do you have? No, let's get to know how many have. Once we get to know and we call them, we give you an area to operate within. Anytime there is, you see neighbor, another cattle herder coming in, you tell the person to move because if there is an issue, you are going to blame. Until that, thank this you. reprisal attack would never well, end. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Adam Bona. Thank you so much for sharing with us. That's Mr. Adam Bona, he's a security and safety expert uh, who has shared his perspective with us. Uh, how, how do you feel about um, the implementation of some of these things, especially now that we are looking at food security issues? Yeah. Do you think this has huge implications for se food, food security? It does. Um, when you talk of food security, we are not limiting it to only crops. We are talking of uh, access to meat, milk, egg, as well as uh, crops. So though we are calling for the complete stopping of uh, this uh, killing, but within our own set, we are also trying to put uh, measures to ensure that there is a peaceful coexistence between us. Now. Uh, how, how specifically are you doing that? Because yeah, there's are, tension all over. Yeah, but we are talking to our members. Very soon, we will make our voice loud, and uh, we hope that the president will it, listen to us. It doesn't look like we have time. No, yeah, it, I'm just... It has to be now. Yeah, it, that's what I'm saying. So how is very soon? Even as we are speaking, the paramount chief of Kwaku traditional area is helping us. So we are registering all the Fleni has the cattle and their owners. And uh, he've gone to identify further banks in the Afran Plains. Now the problem we have is how we'll be able to put those further banks in good shape, which I think uh, the chairman here may pick it up and then also um, let the government know that we are limited in resources because we want to move all the cattle into that area. To the, to so the if they're all in one area and then that area, crop farmers don't go there, they feed there. Even we create business by people going there to produce. But how do they get there in their movements? We have we registered them. That mm. one, they will be guided by the military and then the leaders of the heads to go there. And that place is located for only the cattle. So any herdsman who have not registered his animals, when the deadline is over and we move them there and we see any animal roaming around where we do crop farming, then that becomes, I mean, an illegal animal. Either we take it or because we are doing in conjunction with the military and then the security forces. And he is part of that uh, committee. We are just hoping that it works. And um, what we are also calling for, that is just a uh, traditional area, we are also calling for other chiefs to also learn from what this man is doing. Because if you are able to do that across all the other areas, I think with time, this issue will come down. For now, I mean, it will continue for a while, but if you start uh, what, somewhere. What, you, you mean the... the um, For the struggle between the crop farmers and the friendly, we cannot say it's just going to start. But, but to we, stop cannot, we cannot sit here and say that it will continue because every time it happens, life, yeah, uh, human what, life is lost. That's what I'm saying that I'm thinking that we've not... So as, as leaders, we want to hear you make firm commitments of dealing with it so that we don't lose yeah, we any are other We life. are dealing with it. We are talking to our members. We are also holding him that he should also talk to his members. And we are going to do proper sensitization and monitoring to ensure that we identify the victim. Because anytime it happens, um, there is always denial that it's not done by the headman, our criminals. But we are trying to identify victims 
report them so that it will, they will be arrested. But we are also calling on the military and then the government, especially the president, that we should tackle this like we did with the Galamse. I know he's an action president. If he says he will do it, he can do it. Because the Galamse, it took less than two months. Now the whole thing is subsided. So if you also see this as a security issue, let's deploy military people to go to these areas and identify the, the criminals. As I'm speaking, all the killings that were done in Kintampo and then in Agugu, up to now, there's no single arrest. I don't know if there are some arrests. Nobody is arrested. So that tells you how serious we are taking this or we are not taking it. So I think that if our leaders are actually committed to join what the paramount chief of Kohu traditional area is doing uh, by implementing the same thing across all the other areas, we will, we will, we will find a solution to this problem. Mm. Uh, Iman, I, I saw you laughing in between uh, and, and all that. We know this, uh, he's clearly said this is a food security issue, but uh, also looking at food security, but more importantly, looking at dealing with this issue, the headsmen getting into people's farms, uh, willing arms, whether registered or not. We don't know about that. That's, that's another discussion for the security agencies and things like that. What should we be expecting from the association? No, what we are doing is that we are sensitizing our people, but also pleading with our government officials, as he said, traditional rulers and the security agencies should do all their possible best and to make sure that whoever is a perpetrator who has caused any problem has to be brought to book, as he said. And also making sure that we are also hoping a lot because more of our hope now depends on the cattle, Ghana Cattle Ranching Project Committee because we believe that the final solution to this problem is to be able to identify grazing reserves whereby we will have the cattle separately grazing on their area while the crop farmers will continue so their okay. also uh, 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 farms at their uh, 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 places. So I think with that, nobody will have any problem. But without that, as he said, once in a while, where there are, it's, it's, it's an accident. For sometimes we see people driving their cars and they run to accident. You don't intend to go to the accident, to go to accident with the car. So that is exactly applied to the farmer and the, the cattle farmer and the crop farmer living together in one area. Accidentally, one day, the cattle will stray to farms. No how. But the approach that they give to it when it happened now has become the problem. Because the issue of the Fulani, 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 Fulani has become a kind of issue that, as my security man was saying, has gone to an extent that has created a kind of wrong perception in the minds of a lot of people. So for that sake, even if you see a Fulani man passing around somewhere, mm -hmm. this, there are so many instances when other Fulanis are killed, innocent people are killed. They are even in vehicles traveling because there's an issue between the health Fulanis and other people in the community. They will just check into the car. Whoever is a Fulani man is brought out and is killed. Mm -hmm. So you find out that that perception of Fulani, Fulani, as the man, my other man said, we need to separate the health men and then we need to make sure that when we say Fulani, Fulanis are very prominent people in terms of when we talk about this, uh, uh, the continent, Africa. We have presidents across this country. We have the, the, the current president of Nigeria, who is a Fulani man. We have the current president of uh, 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 Gambia, who is a Fulani man. The current president of Senegal is a Fulani man. Former president of uh, Nigeria, Yaradua, Fulani man. Former president Shagari, a Fulani man. Former president of uh, mm -hmm. Burkina Faso, Thomas Sankara, is a Fulani man. Many, many, many Fulani prominent people. And so if you come and you're talking about Fulani, sometimes one day somebody just called and said, ah, I was in a studio talking, and it pissed FM somewhere, and someone called and said, eh, the reason why these Fulani are misbehaving is that they come to our town, start begging on the street, and the drivers are giving them, people give them money. When they get mm -hmm. the money, they go and buy cattle, and now start to destroy our farm. So what he urged Ghanaians is that they should not be giving them money when they are begging. So he is referring to those people who beg around the, uh, the, the traffic corners, because mm -hmm. taking those people as full of people, he don't know. So there is there's supposed to be a, 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 to create more awareness and educate people. So, so moving forward, understand. what should we be expecting from, what, what? from your end? Because uh, Mr. Bona also mentioned 
issues, including at least speak one local language. And you have uh, people who are heading cattle who do not speak any language at all. So moving forward in, in few words, what should we... Well, concerning the language, in? concerning the language, what I would say is that uh, the ECOWAS protocol that, that does not indicate uh, in any place concerning language. Well, if someone is mm. coming out mm. of the country, okay. all it is not right. mandatory he speaks your language. But if there are rules and regulations... But, but if you are heading a cattle in a land where you do not speak any language, then there's a huge communication barrier. Let, let's go to uh, dog, dog, dog. Uh, moving forward, what should we be expecting from the committee? Because both uh, cattle farmers and crop farmers are looking up to you. Yeah, the mandate of the committee is to come out with lasting solution to the farmer, full, uh, farmer, farmer transhuman herdsman conflict. Lasting solution. That is why I said that we may take a performance. We did need not rush and come out with solution that would not stand the time. So we need to do our work properly. And the sort of solutions that we are looking at is what uh, Iman has been talking about. We may have to get reserve areas mm. specifically visit. Where so is there, is there a further, at, uh, further bank at Peru? Uh, yeah. So the, one that we should be expecting that yes, will come? Yes. There's a bit of difference between further bank and grazing reserves. Mm. At Kumewu is uh, it's been fenced and has all sorts of facilities mm. and so on, which may not be very we, necessary. We don't have a lot of time, yeah. so wrap it up yeah. for me. So, so in, in four months, we should be yeah. expecting some yeah. concrete actions. Yes, uh, yeah. within, within this period. And, and so yeah. next year, we won't come back to this again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, th thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Kwame Opong Anani. We also had uh, with us Mr. Chas uh, Inyamba, and we had a man, Hanafi Sunday, and we spoke to. Mr. Adams Bona on, on phone. Thank you so much uh, for joining us every Sunday at 3 on Agenda. Thanks to the production team. Uh, this is an issue that we are expecting the committee to deal with. And hopefully uh, next year we will not, or before the end of this year, we will see some actions. And he says by March, uh, February, March next year, we see very concrete actions. We, we, we'll keep an eye on that and see how we deal with this full and issue once and for all. My name is Deborah Kabla. God willing, same time next week, we'll bring you another discussion. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and have a productive week. Bye.